Ah, cool. Thanks for showing up. Awesome. Okay, well, um, this is the first day of the drawing sessions with me. I'm Katie Fungal Artist, and I'm going to be doing live drawing with you. Um, thanks to Bex uh, Davison for that awesome photo of the cat. And hopefully, um, you have, if you have a printer at home, you've already printed it off. Hopefully, you found yourself a piece of paper. And um, just an A4 piece of photocopy paper will be fine. And um, also, you're going to need a pencil. But we're just going to wait a couple of minutes for everyone to show up. Um, in the meantime, say hi. I'd love to see who's showing up. It's really cool. I've heard some people are going to come along. I'm excited. Um, it's for kids and for adults, the same thing, because we're going to be drawing. So it's useful for everybody. And um, practice makes perfect. So um, I'll just finish painting here for a second. You guys say hi. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me, and then at 3.30 we'll get started. It's going to be a couple of minutes away, I think. Alrighty, I find that my office is the best place to uh, do this drawing because it's the best light. So if you have a sunny place at the house, um, you know, feel free to use it. I'm lucky I've got a studio gallery at home so I can keep working. And this is my um, dodgy looking tripod for now. Let's see if it goes as well as it did in my test yesterday. Not too bad. Is it okay? There's a funny kind of line through it, but I think that'll be fine. Okay, so who's here? But I see that Aria is here. And Mava? That's cool, if you are. I'm trying to find it. I've got it on my computer. I'm trying to find watch live video. Maybe I should do that. Oh, yep, that helps. And now I can see what you're saying. Hi, Frida. Oh, can I actually hear you too? No, I don't want to hear myself. That'd be bad. Okay. Awesome. There's three people in one group. That's awesome. Oh, hi Lucinda and the girls. That's great that you're doing this. Awesome. Okay. I think we're going to get started. What time is it now? Oh, yep. We're going to get started. Okay. So um, we've got this picture here of this cat. And it's a lovely picture of a cat. So, so cute. It's almost so cute that it looks fake because it's so cute. Um, okay. And I'm going to... Uh, take you through what I call a think aloud. Um, I figured this out or learned about this when I was teaching because I used to be an art teacher and I thought wow what a cool idea and um, what it is is basically to help make a process which could be quite complicated like drawing um, more simple I'm going to let you see into my brain by talking out loud. So I'm going to um, talk you through the method that I use to when I'm drawing and um, it's actually pretty simple. Okay so um there's sort of three, and now also, by the way, because I'm going to be doing this for five days, feel free to take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, this, all the stuff that I do is just my way of doing it. It's just in my opinion. Um, but of course, everybody has different ways of drawing. And uh, there's, I don't know that there is one right way. Um, but um, there's three sort of parts of the method that I use. The first one is we're going to create an outline of the cat. So that's just the outside sort of shape. 
figure out where everything goes. And then we're going to put in the details, okay? So that we have uh, everything that we need in the, in the picture. And then finally, we're going to shade it up and that's when you make the form and hopefully make it look like a cat, which is pretty cool. All right, so um, we're gonna just get started. Um, is everyone feeling okay? Yep, watching. Thanks, Ellie, for watching. You can do more than watching, Ellie. You can actually do it as well. Get your pencils out. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Thanks for showing up for the kids. It's nice that other artists are supporting me. That is really awesome. Okay, and feel free to share this as we go. I think there's a button there where you can share it with your friends and stuff like that. I'm going to start off with using the 2B pencil. Um because I think uh, that's nice and light. For the first part, the outline, you want to use, um, you just want to use a 2B pencil, or you can just, the other thing is you can press lightly with whatever pencil that you have. Hi, Soph, how's it going? This is awesome. You better be doing this. Soph is my sister. Are you going to do it, Soph? I wonder how quickly a reply comes in. We'll find out. Hopefully you do, Soph. Okay. So, um, with, like I said, we're going to start off by just going really lightly. And what I do is I use my hand to figure out how big things need to be. So, I look at this, I'm measuring this with my fingers. And I'm thinking, okay, this cat needs to, because luckily it's going to fit perfectly. We'll make it the same size. We'll, we'll fit it perfectly on the page. So, we'll use the same scale, which makes it a little bit easier because we've printed it off A4. Okay, so I'm saying that I'm going to have my cat head and it's going to be like there. So I'll put a little marker there and a little marker there. Okay, cool. And now it's actually got quite a fat head. So I'm going to go quite wide there and quite wide there. Now it is quite nerve wracking for me drawing in front of a crowd. So I'm, I don't know whether this is going to be the best cat I've ever done. But we'll see. We'll find out. See what I'm doing now is I'm just joining up that shape. And see that is making like a fat oval on its side. Can you see that? How we're going everybody i want you to do this along with me i'm going to do it really slowly if i'm going too fast tell me and i'll slow down if you have any questions tell me and um i can answer them hopefully okay so hopefully we've all done an oval that's going to be for the head all right we're going to also we might as well chuck in the ears if we want to so that's going to go there. And I'm looking at the angle of the ear as well. So it, it kind of goes up towards the top of the page there, like that. So I'm, that's, that's cool. I'm figuring out where to put it. And I'm looking at it, and it's actually going inside that oval. So don't put it on the edge of the oval. Put it right inside. Okay, that's that one. And I'm going to put another ear up here, going this way. It's an annoying fly in the background. Of course, there's a fly, isn't there? I don't normally have flies, but today I do. Go away, fly. Um, okay, so now well, there we are. We have uh, the ears kind of in place. <laughs> You're not doing it, Soph. Okay, fair enough. Well, maybe later on when you don't have to look after the kids. It's all good. Okay, so there we go. We've got two ears and that. And now I'm going to look at the head in relationship to the body. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Basically, we can use the golden ratio, which is a third, a third, a third, which is, means that this cat is of perfect proportion, according to Renaissance. That's just luck, lucky and lovely, isn't it? It's slightly smaller in the body there, but let's put a little mark here. So that's, um, and that shape here of the body, it kind of looks like a bit of a rectangle to me. Do you see that? Kind of squarish. And I'm just doing it lightly. So you see, I'm using geometric shapes to figure out, um, you know, the sort of what the cat form where the cat is going to be okay and then now i'm going to draw the bucket where the bucket's going to be interestingly if we imagine the cat's not in the bucket and it's just the bucket you look at that and you can even practice with your hand to go round and round that is the shape that we need to do on the page so we're going to go like this Whoop. we can do it a few times we can even go through the cat if we want to there we go there we are so there we are it's maybe needs to be a bit smaller. Okay, and we can use the rubber. And because we press lightly, it doesn't really matter. Okay, there we go. That's the top of the bucket. And I'll, I'll rub this out so we don't get confused that the bucket is chopping the cat in half. And then the bottom of the bucket here, we're going to do the same thing. This is called an ellipse. 
we're gonna do that circle like this to, to say this is the bottom of the bucket okay and then we can just join the lines up and there we are we have a cat in a bucket already wow we're doing well this is cool to watch this is nice okay thank you hello to everybody okay we're gonna keep going I won't get distracted okay now this thing seems to be holding up the bucket so um, this again is another circle, but we're looking at an angle that it's kind of flattened. So it's going to go like, maybe like that. We might need to ch fix this, but we got some idea, right? That looks quite good. Okay. And it's quite thick. So we're going to maybe put this lip on it. Now, this again we can change along the way but it's kind of good to get a, a sort of a starting feel for what we're trying to do now that's awesome and now we're going to put two straight lines down here for where um it that it's like it's in an ice bucket you know there we go it's holding up an ice bucket I'm going to tell you why I decided to use this images because when I was a kid um I just spent my whole life drawing Garfield and so I think if you can draw Garfield, this is kind of a cat, a guy, Garfield, then um, you're off to a good start. Okay, so now, well done. Have we done that? Put, let's, let's, I want to hear a yes, I've done that from somebody. Uh. I don't know whether you've done that or not, but I'm going to keep going anyway. All right. We need to figure out where the eyes are going to be put, all right? This is all part of sort of like, uh, well, we've kind of done the outline now, I guess, and now we kind of need to put in the details, all right? So um, we are going to think about where the eyes are in relationship to this head. Now, interestingly, it's in the middle of the head. So I'm going to put a line here, and I'm going to put a line down through the central axis of the head because that tells us where the middle is. Okay, and then these eyes are quite far apart, far enough apart for me to put my finger in. There we go. So that's where the eyes have to be. And the eyes are almost circles, like kind of flat marbles. So I'm going to make some flat marbles. Oh yeah, there we are. And while we're on it, where is the nose? The nose is underneath. And then there's a line down here, very important. And then this line down here and this line down here. Okay. Wow, we've already got a cat. Okay. Um, so that's the basic part of the, the cat's head, I think. You know? And now we're going to move down here. And we're going to see the collar goes under here. And I we will do this little bell. But, you know, okay, we'll do a bell. Just there. All right. And um, then it looks like with these, this cat needs some feet that we need to draw. So we're going to put uh, sort of a circle. Now, this is interesting because you can't draw what you know. You have to draw what you see. So when I'm looking at this paw, I'm just drawing the shape. I'm saying, what kind of shape is that? And it's basically like a, a rectangle on an angle. So see that? I'm just drawing a rectangle on an angle. Don't worry about the fact that it's a cat paw or that you've got to try and look like it's in front of the body or anything like that. Just look at the shape of it, okay? And then here for this, I can see that in relationship to the bucket, this um, one is coming out of the bucket, right? So it's making it a bit asymmetrical, which makes this a great composition, by the way. Um, and then we're going here. And now this cat might be a little bit fatter than I thought it was. So we'll bring it out here. Because it's not fat, it's actually, it's like my dog it's not fat it's just big boned so it's just fluff that's going to be fluff out there and it might be even more fluffy out this way that way too okay so that is a uh it's the other leg and this is where that joins up there so there we go we've already got the cat its paws its heads the bucket and everything like that have you got it sort of listened to? Well, that's cool. You just got to try it out, you know? Remembering this is day one, and every time you practice drawing, it's going to get better and better. So you just keep at it.
all right and don't worry at this point what it looks like because um it sort of has to look bad before it can look good you have to have faith that it will all work out in the end all right okay so we've got all the the basic stuff here now now we can start putting in actually the cool detail so let's start with the eyes because that'll be fun and um, we're going to put in the circle within the circle and then there's a little white bit in the eye as well and we're going to put the circle within the circle and then the little white bit as well okay and now i'm going to figure out what all this happening with the nose there's lines every kind of place where there's a line you can draw a line so you see here this kind of tigery looking uh grizzle that he has on his face we'll draw that it's cool okay there we go that's his sort of like facial um, marks and it looks like he has some f oh look at that look there we go he's definitely got some uh what's it called those things whiskers but we need to maybe it's like garfield you just need to go like down around i don't can't exactly see how many whiskers he has but let's just say creative license he has got three there we go okay and now we're going to we've done the whiskers and we can um now go up to the ears and um start putting in some detail in the ears i see there's this really cool clump here on his head which i'm going to do and there's all these little tiny little lines of fur coming off his ear look at that nice 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 and then on this other side same thing there we go okay okay good okay so we're just putting in the details that we can see so all these little bits of fluff you're literally just drawing those in okay so we've done the fluff on that ear done the fluff on this ear in the middle here it's kind of flat so we'll just flatten out his head a bit all right that's quite cute and then if we come down on this side this is really kind of rugged down here kind of it sort of um, blends into the background a little bit so you can't see everything but we'll just go around the edge i'm literally scanning it like a computer and i'm saying to myself what is in this tiny part i'm not worried about the whole thing you know I'm just looking at this tiny little detail, you know? This is not a, a quick thing to do. You have to kind of just take a little bit of time. There we go, we've gone around the outside. I'm just gonna rub these lines out here now because they're distracting me. We don't need those anymore because we've got everything in place. We've already got the cat. Super cool. Um, okay. And now we can also do the fur on this side. On that side of the body. He's also got kind of like lines of fur if we're looking up through here. There we are. And that's going to help shape his body a little bit. And there's a little bit of fluff down here. A bit of fluff here. A bit of fluff here. And then some more fluff around the sides here. This is a lot of fluff, this cat. A lot of fluff okay we're doing good okay there we are that's awesome i feel like i haven't put enough detail back up here in his eyes so i'm going to go back and put some in here all this that's my dog in the background making that noise just little bits every detail that you can put in is great People think that they have to make it perfect to make it look real, but if you want to get a likeness, it's actually the flaws, the things that make it a bit different, that uh, will make it look like the real cat, I believe, in my opinion. Okay, that's not, not bad, not bad, not bad, considering I'm being watched by people. Okay, now I've done all the head that I'm going to do right now, and now I'm going to come in and put some details. So everything that where I can see a line, I'm putting this in, and, and again, I'm going around like a computer and sh figuring out where to put the lines. Okay. Mm-hmm. All righty. You're trying your best. Well done. That's it. Fantastic. Now remember, I do have a Master's of Fine Arts. I've been making artwork since, uh, you know, forever. 
and um, I've been drawing for ages too and you've just got to keep practicing you're doing great I wonder whether it's possible to take a photo of what you're doing and, and attach it to the live chat I'm not sure if someone has the technology to do that feel free okay we're doing great I will uh, say to myself I'm doing great you got to do a bit of self-love um, okay so now I'm gonna put these lines in here there looks like there's one line there there's another line there and there's another line there okay doesn't look like my bucket is maybe as deep as it needs to be but I'm gonna give myself a break and say it's all right looks like I'm drawing the base there of it okay and then also um, underneath you see if you look where in relationship to the pore it is there's that line that comes down here okay see there okay and um oh wow i think that looks pretty good i've gone over the line here that doesn't mean not meant to go there okay that's awesome okay so now that's basically enough details for us right now so what we can do next is um actually start shading has anyone got any questions for me though so i'm happy to answer any questions if you have any Smiles, that's just good. Thank you very much. Mine looks like a line. Well, yours, it is a cat. So cats are like lines, no problem. Oh, you're sending me some photos, Sophie. That is great. I don't know how it's gone on to some, it's gone on to some other page. I'm just gonna have to minimize that because I can't read everyone else's thing. Mine looks something like from Halloween. Well, that's okay. I'm, I think mine does look a little bit like that too right now. I have a grumpy cat. Well, that's all right. I don't think the cat looks particularly happy, and I think that's part of the reason I chose this one is because it looks like me in lockdown, pretty grumpy sometimes. I can't say I've been my best self the whole of lockdown. Um, it's definitely been quite testing having this new sort of uh, thing to deal with, hasn't it? Hasn't it? So this kind of grumpy cat worked. I think it's it speaks for us, people. I think it speaks for us. Okay, so now um, <laughs> there's no such thing as embarrassing. My wife says, um, well, "There's what is there no there's no such thing as good art. There's only art, and I think that's a good thing to remember." Okay, okay, we are going to um, now uh, start shading. So no matter where you are, just let's start shading because things do get better when you start putting a bit of shading in all right because we'll also add a bit more detail along the way as well um okay so what have i got i'm going to use my 3b because i'm so lucky i've got heaps of pencils you got just a 2b 2b is fine you just find that um you will just have to press harder what pencil are you using well i'm using a 3b apparently according to my lovely person that i buy all my art supplies off she says that because I don't really get in with a, what kind of pencil for what. I just think a pencil is a pencil and push harder. But saying that um, I'm starting now that I'm doing all this drawing, I'm starting to think maybe it does matter. Um, so, yeah, this is a 3B, which is kind of good middle of the road. And we can do quite a lot of things for it, so, with it. So that's cool. I have brought along again um, my Black Beauty, which is my favorite. This is for really dark shading. And so everyone will want to go and buy one of these after lockdown because it's just beautiful. And it's so booty and strong and just good looking. Um, but um, yeah, for now, just use whatever pencil you have. It's, it's fine. Okay, so um, let's start at the top again. The reason we start at the top is it because it stops the so much smudging. There's not so much smudging. All right, so I'm going to shade, but the whole time that I'm shading, I'm actually looking at the picture of the cat. Okay, I'm not really looking at um, the what I'm what I'm doing. I'm really just keeping on more looking at the cat than looking at the page. Okay, trust that your um, brain and your eyes and everything kind of knows what to do and um, you, it will do what you want it to do. So just have the trust and the thing is you have to, this is observational drawing, so you have to look at what you are drawing because otherwise it won't look like what you are drawing. Okay, so when you spend more time looking at um, what we are drawing and I'll put my finger on what I'm looking at, then um, 
than anything else. Okay? Now, uh, okay, now I'm just thinking, what am I looking at first? Why am I doing the dark bits first? Well, I, I shade from dark to light because I think it's easier. I'm not that, um, I just find it easier because everyone can find the dark bits, right? So these are the dark bits. See that? I'm looking at the dark bits. So we're starting and we're just looking. We're going to scan the image again and we're just looking for the dark bits. So we're just shading the bits that are dark, dark. That's a simple, simple thing to do. So just looking for the dark bits. You're almost objectifying the image so that um, you don't really care that it's a cat anymore. You're only just looking for dark and light. Don't take it personally, cat. We love you, but, you know. The other thing is, did you know that cats make me sneeze? So I do have, we do have a cat, but... I have to sort of admire it from afar. We have a, an understanding that um, I don't want to give you too much cuddles, cat, you know. Um, okay, so again, how are we going? Woohoo! She's breaking out 6B. Yeah, do it, do it. Okay, so I'm happy with those ears because the thing is with shading, you don't just do it once. You generally build it up and do it time and time again. So you're not trying to do a one-hit wonder. We potentially might have to go back and do some more. But I'm feeling like the ears are done and I'm feeling like these eye bits are done. And now I'm going to do the dark parts of the eyes, which will be so fun. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white in the eye. Oh, so cute. Yeah, he's cute. And these little dark lines around his eyes, like me today because I was so nervous about drawing in front of you guys. I don't know that I slept too much last night. Woe is me. It's funny because, um, yeah, I usually just tell people what to do and I make art in my own time. I don't, this is very unusual for me to make art when other people are watching. So, but it's important we get outside our comfort zone, isn't that right? So, you see, I'm just shading everything that I see is dark, dark. Now, I want this nose to be noticed because it's the nose. So, I'm just going to push a little bit harder. And there's probably, sometimes we do have to imagine, I imagine there's nostrils, even though I can't see them very well. So, I'm going to make that like that. And then I'm going to, see that line there, I realize that it needs to be thicker. And this line, and now what is magic about this part of the left-hand side, if you look at it closely, it kind of scours down. That's important, because uh, these are the details. This is the facial expression. I love drawing animals, not because, of, well, I do like animals, but the reason I draw animals when I do is because I like the way they can portray human emotions and people can stay open to the ideas. This is why I like to... So I almost use them, I guess, as models for my artwork. Okay, that's cool. And then we've just got to do around here a bit more. A little bit more shading here. Okay, we're doing really well. Okay, more feedback here. Uh, no need to be nervous. We really appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. It's... <laughs> It would be easier if I knew exactly what it was going to look like, but you never do when you're doing a drawing, do you? You never know, but I guess that is why I make art. If I knew what everything was going to look like, it probably wouldn't excite me enough, you know, and I probably wouldn't do it. Now, um, okay, so I've looked at the tones, the dark tones through here, and I'm happy with that. I think, feel like I need to do a few more lines here. I think it's starting to look like a line, but it doesn't matter because he is. Um, down here in the face because that comes from down there and it gives it a bit of form so when I'm doing the lines I'm, I'm doing directional lines so rather than just going straight down I'm going around a little bit to give the feeling of um, volume okay okay so that is the face done enough for now and then we're going to hop down to the collar there's a dark bit under there in the collar and we're gonna we're gonna make it dark like that okay he's looking so cute how could you not like this cat? It's such a cute cat. Okay. Um, okay, now I want to do something. We have artistic license because we can do whatever we want because we're artists here. So instead of making this bell, I think I want to make it into a heart. Just to make it, just, just to really push the kitsch boat out. 
Look at that. Can you guys draw hearts? And then I'll draw a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a um, bit, bit of light on there. Because if I look at this picture, I think that the light is pretty flat. But there is shadow here, so there's a bit more light coming from this side. So we'll make it darker on this side. And a little bit lighter on this side. I want to make it look like a heart. There we go, it's a heart. Have you got a heart? You should do a heart. Take my lead. Okay, and now, um, all right, we've got that sorted. Okay, cool. Okay, the cat is grumpy and it's got a heart. It's still loved. Okay, and now we're going to go down to the paws and we're going to shade in a little bit to the dark bits. Now, notice that if we're looking at... Um, what I do when I'm doing drawing is sometimes I even actually print things in black and white because um, it takes away the, pos the possibilities of color. Um, so you can just see the tone. Okay, so this is darker than this, all right? And then there's this, which is we call a mid-tone. So um, when I used to teach photography, a great black and white image has um, black, gray, and white. And to be honest, again, in my opinion, I think that a drawing looks awesome if it has black and gray and white. So we will try to build all those tones to give contrast to our drawing. Now this here, we can do what's called a flat tone over here, which, which is, see I'm holding, I can hold it down a little bit like this. I can, when I'm saying down a bit, I can hold my um, pencil down the other end and I can lightly go like this. And that's going to build up a tone. And I can do the same on this other one. And I can build up a tone. Because we want these feet to be darker. Doesn't matter if it's not even, because what's even in life? What's perfect? Mm, not a lot. Okay. And we're going to go around this here, because this is the dark part. And then we're going to put these little details in here. Now we want to make it look like it's round. So we have to, um, every line that we do, all these lines, we put them in a direction, you know, to make, um, so the directional lines, they make it look round. And also I'm making them look like a tiger. But again, I'm having faith and I don't care right now. What you can do with the shading is you can build it up over different, different directions. Hang on a second. All right, back at it. So we can build up the shading. Like I said earlier, you don't just want to do a one hit wonder. You can build up the shading over many directions. You see how I'm going different directions? It can build it up that way and it looks really cool. So there we go. There's some, um, some depth into his uh, legs. Is it a girl or a boy, do you reckon, this cat? We don't know. Okay. And there seems to be this bit in here. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. I'm gonna use the rubber and rub this bit out a little bit. Okay. And now we're going to do the bucket, but just wait a second. Kev, I can't concentrate with you here, so can you maybe um, figure that out? Or get it, Harry? Open it for her, Harry. All right, back at it. Okay, how are we going here? What are you up to? Oh, I think... It's a girl. Do you think it's a girl, Kate? Okay, thank you for that. Nice to hear from you, Kate. By the way, I liked your photo that you uploaded. Everyone can keep uploading photos all of this week, and um, I will choose different ones every day to draw, okay? So the cat is looking fantastic. So, so myself, do you, are you happy with your cats, fellas? Looking good? Someone better answer me. Please, please. Okay, now I'm going to try this bucket thing. Now, um, this, this holder. So I've got to decide 
of where my line is going to be. So I'm going to go like that. And from the look of it, this thing goes round and down. And yep, that's looking about right. Yep. Okay. So that is that um, part. And then it comes around here. And it actually gets a bit lighter as it goes back in the background. There we go. And then if I come on to the other side of the cat, again, it's quite light back here. And it comes that way. And then I can see that. And, and then it comes around like this. It's looking pretty good. Things get smaller as they go back in space and that's why it looks bigger at the front here and then smaller at the back and that's okay all right and now we better i'm happy with that i think that's good now that is quite hard ellipses are quite tricky so it takes a bit of time to be honest i you know i'll probably spend the rest of my lifetime trying to get better at them myself but that's the basic idea um and then we're going to draw the bucket and that's going to come in here like that And then this one will go on this side of it. There we are. And we'll flatten that out a bit. So you can play with that. And then we need to maybe put some shading in the back here where this bucket drops off. So now we have a cat in a bucket. And so we can see underneath there, we need to draw this line in, darken it up because we're sure now where it is going to go. So we can um, make it firm it up. Now, wonderfully, because it's like a stainless steel bucket, there's lots of um, details of the reflection. So we can um, sort of firstly mark out where they are, I think is a good idea. So we can say that there's this line here because I didn't really add enough details in the bucket. This comes up here, right like this, and then it changes up there. Um, this one comes up there and down. This one's there, there. It's almost like making a pattern, isn't it? Which is really nice. And then I'm over here, and I'm looking at this. And then this goes like that a little bit funny. Because it's getting distorted by the form. And there we are. That looks nice. Okay, so now I'm just going to shade them up. Shade the bucket up. Oh, I bet actually this is a double line because it's kind of like, um, what is it called? Corrugation. Mm hmm. Yep. That's that. And now um, we can, now I can start to shade it in. Now, if I'm looking at this, I'm going to shade this in here like this. Not so much there. I'm going to jump down here and shade it in a bit more there. Jump down again. Because there's sort of like little bits of um, white in it, eh? So how are you all finding lockdown? Tell me the honest truth. Some people might be enjoying spending time at home. Some people might be going crazy. I thought this was all part of my plan of staying sane. You see, if I'm doing something productive, then, um, you know, there's a greater chance that I'll keep some of my sanity. I think there's some pretty close links to madness and creativity anyway. This is great. Are we? Are you still with me, people? <laughs> you're done, Kate. Are you bored? Show me. Take me a photo. Take a photo and show me what you're up to. Is it finished? Maybe you're faster than I am.
Okay, I'm just going through and still doing all the shading. And then again, I think I'll do this like broad shading here like this. See again, like with their hand down the bottom of the thing, just to get some, some nice marks going that way. Okay, cool. Now we're doing super well. We've basically got the majority of stuff in, I think. And now I'm just, I'm still finding the dark parts though on this. So there's a bit of dark on there, eh? Got that. Oh, I can't, why did you take photos? Bummer. All right, well, maybe afterwards you could send me um, your stuff because I'd be interested to see how it's gone. If some people, I mean, I might be going too fast for people, so if um, you want to, you can always, I think, pause the, the video and, and maybe go back again. That's going to be a bit of a trial and error thing because I'm, to be honest, um, new to this. The technology part of this live thing was daunting. But we got to try these things because we're forced to because we're in lockdown. Okay, now I'm going to teach you something really cool now, which is actually using the rubber to draw. So see here where the, you can't even see where the background is, you can actually um, rub out a little bit and rub out. And so you're drawing with the rubber. Okay, so that's quite cool. So even if you did some shading, um, you can even you can draw um, out with that as well. Now, I think Kate, you've had enough, have you? Um, so I mean, if you you've basically hopefully drawn a cat. But I'm going to keep going and work um, up the cat a little bit longer. So if you want to stay with me, you know, you're welcome. But um, otherwise, um, tomorrow we are going to draw something else. And what, I'm not sure because I haven't decided. But for the rest of us that are going to continue for a couple more minutes or a few more minutes, let's keep going. Um, okay, so I've got um, some dark shading in. Okay, the next part is to um, do what's called the mid-tone. So now we're looking for the grey. So see all this area in here? These are the grey areas. So we still want it, and we want it to kind of look fluffy. So we just um, lightly, it's all about the pressure, we're just lightly pushing on here on the paper. Do you see what I'm saying? And you can kind of shade and do these gestural marks at the same time to make it look like fur which is nice that's lovely okay and there's a lighter part in the middle here so we're not going to do any shading there but we can do some shading this way okay and then the same thing here i'm looking at this little bit here i didn't notice that he actually has almost like a shape on his face there so i'm going to add that yeah so cute and comes down here and then a little bit more here so this is trying to find that the mid-tone there we are and there's a little bit more up here he's quite a light um, cat so we don't need to you know make him look dark because he is a whitish kind of Whatever, champagne maybe would be his colour. Okay. Has anyone got any suggestions for my cat? How's yours? Uh... Oh, okay, so Kate, you're actually enjoying the lesson. You're finding lockdown boring. Oh, sorry. I forgot the question I was asking. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm pleased you're enjoying it. And I find lockdown boring too. I think it's totally boring. Um, because we can't do all the cool things that we like to do in our normal life, right? Um, so we have to make these new things that we have to do. And we have to stay motivated, you know? So maybe if you keep coming to this um, um, art drawing class every day, it'll help you keep uh, motivated and keep um, doing things, you know? I think that is good for us. Um, okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with this cat. I mean, I, when you are working on something, you actually lose dis, um, t t sort of, you lose time and space, eh? And I haven't even really looked at it properly. Um, and sometimes you need to go away 
and have a cup of tea and um and then come back to something you know to be able to see it often i think oh, i think it's good i'm just rubbing this out because this, the light's hitting this bucket on the side so we don't want to have that hard outline you see um i think it's good and then i look at the next day and go no no what was i thinking that's crazy you know i mean you can keep uh working up drawings for a long long time but um and you can keep building it up you know and um, but i think this is a a pretty good first effort yeah and 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 so thank you very much for showing up everybody i hope you spread the word and maybe you come back tomorrow to draw again we're going to do the same sort of process you know so you're going to get better and better as we go and we'll talk about some different stuff as we go can everyone say bye Thanks, Heath, for showing up. That's awesome. Oh, thanks, Tony, for showing up. That's great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm going to find out where my button is to say... Uh, stop. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, you sent me a photo. Thank you, thank you. Holes says hi. Oh, hi, little holes. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Awesome. I'm pleased you had fun, Mavo and Aria. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Ellie. Hey, Greta. Thanks very much for showing up. Ellen and Kate. <laughs> Thanks, Kate, for keeping me on my toes. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, Kate. Be good, everybody. See you later. See you at 3.30 tomorrow.